So, I am Antonio Vargas Nieto, the Poetry Coalition Fellow at Woodland Pattern. And it's been my pleasure to work with so many community partners and orgs to make this happen. We definitely could not have made it happen without the help of Friends of Milwaukee Public Library, Amazon Literary Partnerships, uh, Gardner Foundation, the Academy of American Poets, Brandon Geltzer Memorial Fund and Greater Milwaukee Foundation, and the UWM Creative Writing Program, and the UWM Writing Project, which is a branch of it. Um, and I just want to say a quick word on some of our judges. We have Adilene Quesada from Cine Sin Fronteras in Milwaukee Film. We have, we have Angelo Boris Hills, who is a poet and PhD candidate at UW in Milwaukee. We have the current Milwaukee Poet Laureate, Mario Poet Willis. And we have Barbara Serda, uh, the co-founder of La Rebel Books. And yeah, just thank you again for spending time with us and showing support for youth creative writing. It's super important. And just one more word on the poets. Uh, they brought all of this work to us. We only put the call out and they found us. And all of the words, all of the work, just is what they forged themselves. We only gave them some suggestions and a little bit of helping with the order. But everything is completely their own work. And it's really impressive and really inspiring. And I really appreciate that they have put forth the effort and are present here. It means a lot to us. So we could have the finalists join us on stage over here. Woo! And then in true slam tradition, we will determine the order of the reading from drawing scraps of paper. and brilliant and amazing work. 
So in this very room, we started the Still Waters Poetry Show. It was so simple. It was an invitation. Let's hear young people. Let's hear not so young people. Let's bring in a musician. And let's also bring in at least one community conversation. So in this very room, the invitation from the public library to be able to have a home for that event turned into a constellation, a community of spoken word, of poets, of I like to call us creative change agents. All through this, figuring out how to edit these stories from our personal lives. We built a muscle for listening and being heard. And every human in this room knows that that doesn't always go together, it doesn't always go well. But we learn to listen, and we expect to be heard. And to have young people go out into the world with that muscle and poetry, we only win. So full circle 23 years later, to have the opportunity to emcee the very first Milwaukee Youth Poet Laureate celebration, I'm not going to call it a competition, I know there will be winners and stuff, but we are celebrating young people, we're celebrating, celebrating the art of voice, and we are committing to the importance of voice. And braiding all that together, bringing more young people to the table, bringing more art to the forefront, this is a new dawn, of something that's very old, and that's how evolution works, that's how progress works. That's how poetry works. That revision, it was really good that last time. You take that stanza out, now it's perfect. Until you look at it again three years later and you make another change. So these are young people in front of you representing change, representing forward. And everyone in these seats, I see some poems. I've heard some of your poems. And I know what this art and this community has done for us to be here today. So for me personally, and I got through all that without crying because I was intent on my tissues. <laughs> I want to say thank you for the young people who put your words out in the, the vulnerable space to be judged. And then you're here, and you're going to save someone with what you write. For all the not so young people who have trusted me with your words in this journey, it's because of that that this day is happening. I thank you. I see you. For the not so young people, please keep writing because we are an example of what poetry can do, of what an art community can look like, and why this is important. You're going to hear that from these young people today. That's all. Otherwise, I'll start crying. <laughs> versions of amazing and then we'll talk about the alumni amazing is going to come up a little bit later. Well let's get into these poems and we meet these finalists. Would we like to do that? We'd like to do that. But it wouldn't be Dasha hosting if Dasha didn't make you become friends with somebody. So I'd like for you to turn to someone you don't know and give them a power word. Go. Nervous, um, but I will 
do my best. So my first poem is called Hello Gender. Um, and something that I really struggle with is just a lot of uncertainty regarding gender, as well as like, I don't know, just stigma around how females are supposed to act, how males are supposed to act, and how I fall in between those categories. And so this is definitely one of my more vulnerable works, but it's called Hello Gender. This is not a reflection. This is not me. Alienated within my own figure, I exclude myself from personal acceptance. Very few understand this supposed phase, a phase of self-imposed hatred regarding the entire existence of my own entity, the binary invisible for such a mental state. How can I explain what does not exist? My greatest wish is understanding, understanding of discomfort, of dysphoria, gender, understanding of consistent confusion. Yet, such a notion requires communication, a language of discomfort. Vulnerability is discomfort. How do I accept what is unacceptable? I pray that such a feeling is a face. Thank you. So my second poem is called Sick to My Stomach. Um, I don't really know how to describe this one, so I'm just going to go for it. <laughs> Love is revolting. It repulses my soul. Sentimentality triggers my gay reflex. I twist and I turn, attempting to avoid a disgustingly horrible injustice that love may bring. People become vulnerable, dependent, attached. That will never be me. Love is revolting. I've moved on from you, fool. I'm my own soul, too good for this world. A mere feeling does not define my existence. Love is revolting. The word affection means nothing. I promise, there isn't anything wrong with me. I'm just better than you all. <laughs> Independent from lust, there's sentimentality, independence, to be loved, cherished, and appreciated. Instead, I work to make myself proud, free of lust and love. Love is revolting. I shall say again, I wish to convince this to be true in my heart. Yeah. So my third poem is called Right or Wrong, and it is definitely an exploration of sexuality, and it is actually a poem I wrote a while ago, and I would like to say that I feel much better than what I wrote in this poem now. Um, but it's definitely an important part of my journey in coming to terms with myself and who I am. So it's called Right or Wrong. Why does her hand feel so good in mine? Why does my chest become tight when he's near? Why does her smile make everything seem so fine? Why does his soft tone take away my great fear? My fear of judgment, of exclusion, of dislike. My fear of a different life. My fear of my friends, of everyone leaving. You're going to hell. Oh, what an afterlife. Is it so wrong if this love is so pure? Look me in the eyes and tell me it's not. Don't tell me I cannot glow at the sound of her laugh. Don't tell me I will live without a spot. A spot of acceptance. A spot of safety. A spot of joy. A spot of belonging that my mind just does not see. For it's me. Who doesn't accept who I love, who I die for and cry for, who I always write of. You, the pansexual, caring, strong being, I recognize your trauma, that I am consistently fleeing, but I'm now agreeing to accept that you are who you are, you love who you love, let them hate from afar. So this is my last poem. It is called Pandemic Island, and I wrote it during the pandemic, specifically in the early stages when we were really, really isolated. Um, and so, yeah, here it goes. I am my own island, 
Open to explore. Don't visit, they always say. I really don't get it. Why don't they visit? I'm sandy, undiscovered, desolate, flat like they wanted. I'm the true tropical dream. Sand is balmy and soft, a heaven from home. I tried my best to be that soft. Yet my sand, dry and trodden, arid and thick, treacherously empty, is what I am. I am my own island, open to explore. Are you sure you don't want to talk to me? Undiscovered is interesting, right? You can come visit if you like. Yet my undiscovered is obscure and unknown, terrifying and untraveled. Unheard of is my greatest fear. I thought if I was wild and uninhabited, they would like me. I am my own island, open to explore. I now beg. But me, being desolate, is different, barren and bleak, inhospitable and grim. A waste is how I feel. I thought islands were fun. The flat beach, the sand, everyone smiling, yet no one smiles around me. Because my beach is flat, society hates it that way. Unrealistic expectations of curves is what I now face. My flat just means featureless, boring, and dull. Uninteresting is what I've become. Even if my island has hills, even if it remains as flat as can be, the expectations of society leave satisfaction impossible. Now the expectations of society reign on my island. Please don't ever visit here. It's lonely and depressing, constantly silent, waves crashing, the only melody here. I am alone now, for better or for worse, covered in anxiety sand. I say it again, but this time it's changed. I am no longer open to explore. Thank you. Love is revolting. <laughs> Until it's not. <laughs> Just be ready. Just be ready. We've been there, yes? Yes. Um, I don't have to give you a lesson about poetry. You know how that works. So I want to also point out and share that Mabel is representing themselves, but they are a junior at Rufus King High School. Woo! Our next finalist is going to share some of their introduce themselves through their work. Greg is coming from the Milwaukee High School of the Arts. And when I ask them about their relationship to poetry and what words come to mind, real. Real. And poetry is an opportunity for them to share a message. Some of what they've been through, some of what they've seen. And that's one thing that's reported. But a message is what we're in for. So please welcome Jonah today. Hey, how y'all doing? Good. All right. Um, my name is Jonah Dene. I am a poet, lyricist, writer, and performer here in the city of Milwaukee. I was born and raised here. Um, I do music as well, so I love to rap, I love hip hop, so all this just intertwines within what I do, so let's get into it. Seems as though it is within our reach of figuring out the problem with my skin difference. See, as a black girl, young, you wonder when you gonna be the face. When is it gonna be your turn? Poverty stricken, broken ceilings from above me falling on top of me, and my uncle was left with two choices, either a deathbed or prison system. And my pops, it wasn't to come home. Today I'll read you three poems, all written by me. The first entitled Two Birds and One Cup. The second, Undress My Failures. And the third, Pops I Forgive You. I said you rock with him. 
You rock to bed and shake the hands down, kill the men. You standing with the load of clips, say blow a kiss, the games begin. Huckleberry Finn, the border ships across the Mississippi. Now wake up, good morning, gorgeous. Hopping porches at my door to door. Landlord say my skin ain't worth more than the doughboys dealing dope. This up. 1109, your car garages. Park your car in the alley. Parking lot is where they carry larger carrots. Balling hard, gave a dog the garlic raw dogs. Walking doors, I haven't walked with the law. Now who the call when mama drunk and mama gone? Popping rocks and smoking, now you pop smoke, they pop you. It's cutthroat on my last dollar. They popping collars with pop condoms. They get got them. Out of pocket, not out of bounds. Glass bottles being broken to make knives. Take lives, you shoot nines to be about it. Leave without it. Social worker going through a case files. They encountered the money counters. God promise, I'm not signing on on the front counters. I'm scotch. I'm tossing rocks all over their house. Spilling wine on the popping stepping stone and eggshells. Humpty Dumpty cracking for getting swell. Said it's build the scrumptious. I'm ready to tuck drills. Mess the grill up, call it. Messing the face up, it's on me. Face us with the mirror touch ups. Added makeup, you really beating the face up. I'm talking Lil' Kim. Oh, you can't speak. Spit it through the wires. I'm scratching up your Yeezys. Bearing arms to keep Bill of Rights. Pill of Bible, B-I-G-T-I. Sweeping on Lisa left eye. Lows do a die. Cross her ties. Hang from high. Swinging low, sweet chariot. The more the merrier time is telling. I'll be damned if I'm a failure against the block. Scrambling for answers to why they people just got cremated. And that's their Christmas gift. This just the hell of it. Tupac done got dropped. Look at who you got. Papa Ross to smoke. They'll pop you like pop smoke. Henry Box and Browns. Pop smoking in the other room. Are you scared of it? Twitching notes like Cal Rittenhouse. We done the at this. I'm out there mall taking samples while they sticking up evictions. Is pictures really worth a million words? Like for instance, Malcolm X by the windowsill with his rifle ready for business. Sniffing senseless, sensual, since hieroglyphic serotonin on the symptoms. You got enough sense to know? I sense stupidity. You count those cents in the jar, then you can vote. And they steal it from the broke. My people steal it from the broke. You standing there looking puzzled. Put your pieces on the priest's table. Singing preambles, man. You people police. And pushing their hands that finish probation. She on the lease. Mona Lisa. Speaking of Lisa. Lisa. Let thy loach leech and limit these sneaking out of man. I ain't do anything for the green. Which means they'll even try to lynch you for living across the street. Huckleberry Finn. Keep it quiet on that Mississippi. Who with me? Competing with demons every week. I'm screaming, creep feeding. No trick is a team. Only other people holding the trick and redeeming creeds to Prometheus us all. To kill us all by the blood of my ancestors. I said I had to grow my vines. Before they end up growing to my eyes, I can see I'm grave hopping. Had to up the challenges like Trayvon, Martin got hang time. Never changed for no mind. Change your mind, revolver. Results. Doctor tell you some Holocaust stuff. Come on now, mama said you better than that. It's sisters on my back, they black. Tinted windows, they strapped out right by right. To keep me on my porch with the gnomes. Lord behold, they Lord behold, they fall on some dope. They selling up the street. They stole at the stores. And stole they with it. Who you roll with? Rolling stones. Don't be bold to your own conscience. Bumming your pins out the aisle, come out the closet. Don't frown at some product they somewhere. I was happy with what my pops came in the door with that's growing. It's growth within the poor percent of your presidency. My pops wasn't prejudiced, but you forgive. Forget what the heck they told you. Hold still. Undressed and hit a failure. Said I was never fortunate. I watched crack spill on laps and dust off my back. It's a rap change your ways. Who's Kanye? Don Trey Hamilton. I'll pray the appetite. Get tight on your fight with the mind. Crying to the same cycle cigarettes. It's syrup sandwiches. See, I had to breathe it. You eat it for breakfast. Keeping my arms reached it. Snake it without question. Get the director. More tissue. Paul bearing every letter of cremation before the grave. See, I feel like Holly Berry getting Grammys, but nominate you for sending lazy in the pavement. See, I'm paid to wait for the tempted sleeping people who only sit a pretty perpetual panoramic eyes. Paranesium, Rithio. Cut Joe Lewis a no show like a chauffeur lift with the vehicle. Catch OG two tone blindfolded. Reported live on Kim Porter. Sherlock them up home. Stay tone deaf enough to switch. Winnie Harlow, knocking at the poor shed to Vitiligo. Pablo Escobar, keep the daughter warm. Just got home from being locked up in D.C. Said she got crazy in there. And I thought that was my friends with the sweet 16 in the cell. It's a celebration. Birthing babies at the nurses. It's a full of ladies. Lying on names like Forrest Whitaker. Messing with Marvin Gaye. What's going on? Nothing. We just playing the games of hangman. Game, you bang in. To get moved in the place. They black facing. Got them back tracing. So when they laced us, double K's at the end of AK's being sprayed in the classrooms. Man, I swear I said my people innocent. I remember being a young girl looking into the mirror. Hated the reflection that looked back at me. It's because I was searching for answers, looking for my pops, asking why he ain't protect me. See, I wanted protection. I never wanted love. I just wanted my pops. The man I took last name after, this judge in the corner, in the courtroom asking me 
If I wanted to get to know my pops, see, I gotta get to know my pops. I ain't whining or complaining. See, I was raised on bus stops to be strong, especially when men tried to ask for numbers of how old I am. I picked the bricks from sidewalks as I walked down the neighborhood and make use of it as it, if it was my pops protecting me. I cried tears when I'm this aim trying to protect myself. I wanted that fool to feel my pain. See, I've been carrying this stuff on my back since I watched my moms relax. Let me get personal. I stood in rooms with social workers, counting my quarters from doormats. I stepped on, trying to find love in the answer to why he ain't here with me. And I'm tired of talking about it. See, we tap dance around the conversation. That's Bill Bojangles Robinson, that's stormy weather. I broke bread with my impatient little sisters who I gotta protect, cause they pop say they'll with them. I dodged gunshots, dead. I had to make sure my pants were tight. I witnessed grown men try to untie them. I'm crying, I'm crying for out loud, I've been trying. Like Tina dodging Ike, calling Robin Gibbons, grabbing away at Mike Tyson. What did they give you? A piece of mine, but here's a piece of my pie. Young me peeking in the window blinds. It's car lights. I shouted for my pops, doing drive-bys. Listen to what I've been through. I had to face faces that told me straight up, black sister, he ain't want you. And I thought it was my fault that moms couldn't do it on her own. And I had to wear my brother hand-me-downs and worn out clothes. She put the call on hold, folding clothes at laundry mats. See, I got a phobia of holding on for too long, longing for a hug or closure. I got doors closed up on me. I got shot at going home in the morning. While she got to take morning jobs without a worry, I got my thoughts rubbed around on the ground when I tried shouting. See, I had to, see, I had to take precaution. They told me to get lost. The law said K-9s and doors parking, working nine to fives, cause pops ain't coming through that door tomorrow or anytime soon. See, I just deal with it. In any given condition, don't contradict me into thinking he was innocent, believing me. See, this aim seemed too accurate. Two, three, action. Accountable, beat the back of the sky before the street lights cut on and the next guy tries to ask if I wanna ride home. An easy target, cause, they, cause my pops ain't here with me. And I forgive you. Thank you. religion and myself. Mm. I 
am a damnation of earth, a poisonous creation of a broken rib, mud, and tears. I am the daughter of rage, the tempting skin of time swallowed, the companion of darkness. I played with the shadows. The dirt blessed my braided head, and the grave sung hymns as I danced, peering from the roots. The sun smirked as I squinted at its power. My eyes filled with wonder or worry. As when you leave the cave, your eyes whisper to you that the darkness will never be the same. Standing, scorching, smiling back at its golden rays, fear subsiding, replaced with burning anger. I was never an acquaintance with the only source of light on earth. Was I really meant to be buried with those rotting corpses? Was I really destined to fade without flowering? Or was I convinced all these years that from the dust I was created and to the dust I would return? My next poem is titled my mother prepares so famously. And I actually really do love this poem because it reminded me of a moment I shared with my mother over a part of my favorite Nigerian dish. And during this moment, just her care and her genuine concern for me reminded me about how much she loved me. And this moment always carries my heart because on the worst days, I know that she's still with me no matter where I am. Where are you going? Where have you been? My mother acts as I glide through the door. Feet swollen from traversing these infinite deserts. Dry air turned oxygen, bleeding into veins, searing out my heart no longer in accord to her. Gray matter in a shawl, silent space that sits across from me. She, aware of my absence and the presence of this heavy weight, reaches pulling, pulling my hand, a million miles reconvened. A single step turns silent truce, silent praise for the return of a prodigal. A steaming thought of the gussie fills my void in the space in this quaint kitchen. Her smile is weathered, our paths trodden. A mother once young sees herself in this shattered mirror, piece by piece. She picks me up, puts me back together, even if her nimble fingers are cut, offering her blood in the process. She says, Ada, tell me what's wrong. Tears swimming in her eyes. She knows, she fears. The paths we've taken have now diverged. An ocean separating our pasts, our stories. I offer her a smile. Weak and abashed, tugging on fleeting hope, trying to be a daughter to the shadow of a woman. Inching towards the bowl that sits patiently between us. My fingers pause the pounded yam, breaking this yam, this silence. I tell her I was lost. Drowning her time, passing like the wind, she asks me where I am going. I dip the yam in the soup. Lifting the burning bodies to my lips. Here, I say. Home, I say. My last poem is titled New African. And as a daughter of Igbo Nigerian parents, I've always looked at and wondered about the history of colonization 
and its effect on every single aspect of my identity and that of my parents. Smile. In the nightmare of your forefathers, you dreamt that the rain would cleanse you of the savage. Dance. The celebration of your funeral parades the death of your blindness as you caress the dirt that cakes your feet. Remember to shake the ashes from your shoes. Sing. Melodic Latin hymns float to your new God like a cloud, white, weightless, and true. Watching as the drums burn, this gathering will remain scattered. Listen. You are the heart beat to this new world. A pulse that counts the lost rhythm to life, the silence of your land is palpable. Even the cicadas mourn. Thank you. Blew my mind. 
And from that moment, I went home, I bought a journal, I bought a pen, and that was it. Like, it just, it just went. And I spent the next three years admiring poetry, admiring Dasha, meeting wonderful people, and reestablishing my relationship with this craft. And then when I moved to Maryland, because once Dasha's in your life, she's in your life, and you were so fortunate to have her. She connected me to a man by the name of Patrick Washington, who um, worked with Def Jam Poetry. He worked with Brave New Voices. He had made a name for himself in the DMV area as an established poet. And he came to my doorstep, and I'm saying hello, and I'm talking about how much I love poetry. And he says, yeah, well, I um, started this Youth Poet Laureate program here for Prince George's County, um, and I would love to get you connected. So I'm like, yeah, I would love to intern for the Youth Poet Laureate. I would love to work for the Youth Poet Laureate. And he just kind of looked at me funny, and I was like, what? And he was like, well, I'm, I'm letting you know that like, you can apply to be the Youth Poet Laureate. And I'm like, come on now, get out of here. You know, like, I would check in the calendar. It's not April Fool's, like, this man is actually serious. But I could not process the idea that I could be the Youth Poet Laureate. Because when I hear Youth Poet Laureate, <laughs> I don't find myself big enough, you know? Um, and it's, it's really interesting because when I was announced the Youth Poet Laureate, there still was this like deep shock, this deep imposter syndrome that I felt. And throughout the journey, I realized that it's important that little black girls know that there is not a single role or position on this earth that is bigger than them. And yes, the role is big, it's very big, but it is not bigger than me. And I am capable and I am powerful and I did it. And I am here to support the next poet laureates who come into Milwaukee and bring this wonderful change into Milwaukee. And what I want to leave you three with is that you know and fully understand that you entered this room capable and you will leave this room capable. And that regardless of whichever name is called, that all three of you belong here. Living in that house taught me it was easy to deceive my father. 
Prime example of a black man defeated. Prime example of a black man depressed. Battle with the worst, but still flaunted like the best. He was wrecked, always coming up with quick come ups and scambles, denying any task he was too weak to handle, like fatherhood, like marriage, like companionship, like caring, like committing. Only thing he ever stuck to was his lies and religion, overly religious, but I wonder which God abided him beating on his children and his women. He was a monster. We were whipped, starved, and stench, but had more wealth on our hearts than the scars on its skin. He sprinkled holy water to cover his sins, had the whole world fooled. They never wondered what's within that four bedroom, two bathroom, a big yard and a big kitchen, bang rooms like a heat kitchen had no food in it. And if you identify with Christian, God is my witness. I cried so much in that place, my misery was sickening. Going to school, hanging with chicks I didn't like, kissing up just to get close to so I could spend the night anywhere but there, no electricity or lights, anything but to see my mother and father fight our life was hell behind those doors. No food in our stomach, sleeping on the floor, father beating on my mom, cheating, chasing after whores. I will never forget the time when I was four. And I woke to my mother screaming, said, I can't take this no more. Forget you, see, till I'm leaving. I couldn't believe it. I was finally free, free of that four-bedroom graveyard sitting on nine cracked streets, now living in a three-bedroom, one bathroom, a big yard and a big kitchen, rough neighborhood, crime rate high, men with too much pride to work a nine to five so they ride, hit the stands to get by, but I love it. I love the ghetto. I never met a place more real. The streets is pure truth and I never worried about appeal. And it's real and I love it. Thank you. that I'm going to read um, was a poem that I wrote um, from a place that I was in when I moved to Maryland. And part of me wanted to move to Maryland because the world is really, really big and because I wanted to just see all the things. Um, because one thing that I just gotta tell you if you get a chance to know her is that possibilities are boundless. And when you believe that you are boundless, the world will align. Um, and so I left Maryland to find my adventure, but I also left because at that time I had just um, left a very abusive relationship. And what I had come to notice was that every woman in my family going back to my great grandmother had been in an abusive relationship that started when they were a teenager and moved until they were in their early 20s. And so I started to see this pattern, this generational curse that had been birthed. And I submitted this poem, um, and it was the poem that I also delivered at my youth poet laureate um, performance. And so I wanted to share it with you all now, and it is entitled Generational Curses. I wonder, was God in the room? Were chairs set aside for 16 angels to watch and guide you in execution of this ritual? Did you wash your hands first? Pour three times into your right, then rub the soap onto your left. Did you raise your hands in prayer <coughs> before you raise them at her face when my great grandmother walked into your bedroom? Did she mistake the candles lit for romantic purposes when you slapped her? Did her chest cave in as if her soul was being ripped from its vessel when you made a sacrifice? Out of my great-grandmother's body, did she fall to her knees for your mercy? Did you forgive her for the blood stain she left on your floor? Did you forgive her for the shriek she pierced your ear holes with? Did you forgive her? For whatever made you do it in the first place, did you know that your hands came with a ripple effect? That your slaps could be felt on the faces of your descendants four generations later? Did you know that you breathed life into a demon that would haunt the bedrooms of all the women in your bloodline? Did you know that you marked a blueprint for men to love your granddaughters the right way in the tradition of men in my blood? The man that I love left a bruise on my face and I still loved him after. Consumed by the belly of an untaught ritual, swallowed whole by a man, craving to make me half a woman, raised to fill up shoes but to never take up space. I wonder, was God in the room? 
to witness the heathen I had made of myself in the tradition of women in my blood. I fell to my knees at him, kneeled in my own blood pool and sought forgiveness, marked a, my, wiped a mark from my cheek with bare hands and a closed fist, repented for a sin I knew not I was committing. I wonder, was God in the room to witness the heathen I had made of myself to the man who laid my body at an altar and made an offering out of my skin? Did you know you remind me of my great-grandfather, a butcher? able to shed the skin of women only using his bare hands when you made a sacrifice out of my body. Did you know I would still love you after? Did you know that me still loving you after had nothing to do with me still loving you after? I just don't know how to break tradition. Did you know that I am sick of the women in my bloodline never being able to break tradition? Passing down battle scars like sweet potato pie recipes, never tasting the salt that forms in your mouth when a man makes a ritual out of your body to the man who walks walked in the blood trails of my great-grandfather, did you know that my hands held history? And when I slapped you back, did you know that my great-grandmother rose from her coffin and pulled a chair aside just to watch me? I am so sorry that I made a sacrifice out of your body. I just had to break tradition, had to mark a blueprint for men to love my granddaughters the right way, had to ensure that no more women would be cursed by a man like my great-grandfather. Thank you all so much. I am, a, and you appreciate this, all the writers and artists in the room, I have a thousand poems in my head, and I'm just waiting for the muse to tell me which one I'm supposed to do right now. <laughs> We've covered family, and legacy, and generations, and healing, and identity. He had a job collecting insurance payments, $2 a week. Drove a covered wagon to El Dorado searching for gold. Died in the mines there. Poured wine on the Titanic. Ate dinner with Du Bois. One time. Forced the bank to open a checking account separate from her husband's. Cleaned the tiger cage on the circus train. Cleaned a whorehouse near Reno. Helped clean up the city after Katrina. Fell 44s on the new scaffolding of Chicago. Contracted polio. Lived near the internment camps and swore she heard them screaming. Worked the lights at Birth of a Nation. Worked at C.J. Walker's factory. Scheduled to work the day of Apollo 11, but his appendix burst. Burst with the banner at the Rose Bowl. Crossed the border without his family. Passed through Ellis Island without his wife. Refused to cut his hair. Refused to burn her bra. Was charged with war crimes, heresy, tax evasion. Hammered wet metal into missiles. Posted a bill of sales for slaves. Showed housewives how to sell Tupperware. War. God. Dope. Taught blind children to read with their fingers. Hung laundry in the line before Harlem changed hands. Hate Ashbury. Bronzeville. Raised babies filled with lead. Filled with music. Convinced the neighbors to mount their speakers in the windows. Challenged the unions to overlook her breasts, overlook his boyfriend. The crooked angles of their legs prepared notes for Dr. King. Prepared a trumpet for Miles Davis. Signed the warrants on the Salem witch trials. Enlisted in the service. Registered for nursing school. Ran moonshine. Collected shot glasses from all around the world. Always baked pies for the bake sale. Never came home for Christmas. Died on Mama's birthday. Through the first rock of red summer. Through the switch on death row. Through Junior out of the house. Saved a man's life on the subway one day. Mailed his last dollar to help build the Statue of Liberty. Little Red Schoolhouse. Memorized all of Chuck Berry's moves, Kennedy's speeches, grandma's recipes, bet against Joe Lewis. Made love to Doc Holliday, the deacon, and the pastor, Bruce Lee, El Che, Jimi Hendrix. Planted the first orange tree in the city. Was the first girl to wrestle in the district. First altar boy to break their silence. Never told a soul about the operation. Never responded to the summons. Never stopped going to auditions. Never came back to town. Stayed sober. Stayed together. Stayed angry until they died. Kept a vigil. Kept a faith. Kept a locket to remember. Remember. 
You will be remembered inside of these intricate histories by someone. Or maybe no one will recall that scar on your face, but your story cannot be erased. Your heartbeat is a forever history. Forever history. You were here. small staff 
and we do 400 programs a year across the arts, um, mostly literary arts, but also we're doing concerts and we're doing visual art exhibitions. Um, we have a lot of work that we do. Bringing on a program of this magnitude absolutely requ required additional help, which is, we're so happy we have Antonio. Vargas Nieto has been helping us this year as a poetry publisher fellow. And we do expect for this to become a full-time position um, because now we're not just going to be organizing with um, our partners, but we're going to be supporting a youth poet laureate. So excited to find out who it is. Thank you, poets, for sharing your stories. 